Hello. Today is May the, I think, 15th, 2020. And as most of you already know, for the last couple of months, a lot of people have been doing a lot of baking, myself included. I started a sourdough starter a little over a month ago, and now it's pretty active. A month is a baby, but as long as it's active and it does what it needs to do, then we can still use it. I've already made a couple of loaves of sourdough bread. My first one wasn't as successful, but the second one was amazing. And so I'm here to do it again. I'm gonna use the same recipe and cook some sourdough bread. I want you all to keep in mind that I'm not a baker. However, I do, did do a lot of research and a lot of reading on how to make sourdough bread and testing. So I think that I do an okay job. Please, all you bakers out there, don't criticize me. I'm a home cook. So I'm cooking home cook style sourdough bread. The recipe I'm going to be using has about 500 grams of flour. And I'm using all purpose flour because that's what I have. I've also got 10 grams of salt and I've got 370 grams of water. To all of this, I'm going to be adding 100 grams of my sourdough starter. For the first part of making this bread, I have everything laid out here. I've got my 500 grams of all-purpose flour. I've got 370 grams of water, which I've pulled about 55 grams off and I'm going to be adding only a portion of that 370 in the beginning until I can see what the hydration is going to be. I don't want this to be a really super loose dough. I also have my 10 grams of salt. I've got my sourdough starter here and it's bubbling along and I've already measured it out so that's 100 grams. I've got a bench scraper and I've got a plastic type scoop thing so that I can scrape things on the sides. I also have a shower cap style plastic bag which I can put over the dough as I go through this process. The first step of the process is to add the water and that's going to cause an auto lysis or we're going for an auto lysis and the purpose of that is to hydrate the dough and start the gluten building process. So I'm going to add the water and we're going to mix this all together and I'm going to use my hands, my gloved hands. And we just want to get that dough combined with the water. I'm not going to add the other ingredients yet. I'm going to let this auto lice for about an hour or so and we'll find first I'm starting off with this shaggy looking dough and we'll find that at the end of about that hour that this becomes very very soft and easier to manipulate as we're developing that that dough and getting all those enzymes and things in that dough activated. I'm going to continue mixing this and I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. I've got my dough mixed with my water or combined with my water. And now I'm going to take the plastic bag and put over it, set my timer for an hour, and we'll come back to this. Keep in mind, I have not added the salt yet. I have not added the extra water, nor have I added the sourdough starter. That will be in my next step as we come back after this has auto iced. It's been an hour and my flour water mixture has been brewing there for that time period. And you can see it gets a lot more sticky and it isn't as shaggy as it was before. Now we're going to add the salt and I'm just going to drizzle that on top. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of that reserved water, and that's about 50 grams of water that I did reserve. I'm going to add that to it and incorporate in the dough. I'm going to take a few turns to get that mixed in there. At the same time, I've got my 100 grams of sourdough starter. This morning, I fed my sourdough starter. And so it's brewed up pretty good here. We'll add that and also incorporate it into our, our dough. And we'll do a couple of squishes and get that to go in. Now that I've got this mix, I'm going to transfer it to another container. And this is where we're going to do all our bulk fermentation in this container. That process is about a total of about three hours depending upon how the dough looks and feels. And we'll leave that and we'll come back in about 15 minutes and we're going to do our first fold on it and we're on with this process making sourdough bread. I'm going to put this lid on And one other thing, I do use the gloves, and the primary reason for the gloves is that I don't want to have to continually wash my hands and wash that dough into my sink, thereby potentially causing a big cement cloud in my sink because of all that dough that dries out in there. So that's a precautionary means. It's been about 15 minutes since we added our starter and our salt. Now it's time to do a series of what we call stretch and folds. And this is a way of getting the, the dough to the, the consistency that we want and to develop the gluten in it so that we can go on to making our sourdough. It's not a kneading process, it's a stretch and fold. Now remember I had some reserved water. I'm gonna use that to coat my hands to go in and do these series of stretch and folds. It is simply to go under the dough, stretch, and pull over. Then we go to the other side, we do a stretch, and pull over. And you can even notice what the difference in the consistency of the dough is from when we did the addition of the salt and the sourdough starter, starting to develop the elasticity that we want. And we're going to stretch. We don't want it to break apart. We just want to stretch and fold over. And we're going to do a series of about four to five stretch and folds on this dough until we get to the point where it has like that window pane type thing that gluten has developed correctly. So I'm going to put you on hold again and we'll be back. We're now on our second fold in our quest to develop the strength in this dough. And once again, we're going to do a series of stretch and fold. I'm going to stretch, pull up, fold over. On the other side, stretch, pull over. Stretch, and we don't want to break it. Pull over. Stretch. And just let the weight of the dough pull itself and pull over. And you see how that's starting to look a lot more like it's got strength in it and elasticity. At the same time, we're also doing like a bulk fermentation during this phase. We're going to put this top back on, come back in about 30 minutes, 
then do another stretch and fold. Now first two stretch and folds were 15 minutes apart. This next one is going to be a half hour and the one after that will be a half hour. A half an hour has passed and we're on to our next stretch and fold. See our dough is starting to rise and aerate and I'm going to wet my hands. This time no gloves. And we're going to get under there. And do our next series of stretch and fold. At this point it's not sticking to my hands. We're going to let it rest again for another half hour and we'll be on to our hopefully last stretch and fold. We'll see what we get when we get there. I've done four sets of stretch and fold on this dough and it's actually looking quite good and it still has little bubbles but as a just in case I think I'm going to just do one more. It does have a dome on, on the top, which indicates that it is aerating. So let's just do one more stretch and fold, and this will be uh, the last one for us. Ah, yes, there's a big difference from the last time. Looking good here. Okay. I'm going to now leave the dough here in this container to complete the bulk fermentation. And it has probably about another. Oh, about another hour and a half to go. The dough has gone through bulk fermentation and you can see it spread out over the bottom of the container and you can see a few little balls there where the bubbles have come through. Now I'm going to appreciate this dough. I'm going to pull it out onto a dry surface my dry counter. Give that little help to come out. My little scraper tool. Makeshift scraper tool, I should call it. And then to facilitate this, I'm going to dampen my hands in my bench scraper a little bit so that I can roll this into a ball. And how am I going to do this? How am I going to roll it into a ball? I'm going to take it, open it up a little bit, it's very soft right now, and then pull it halfway into itself, another corner, another corner, all these corners. Take my bench scraper and turn it over, making sure to keep my hands wet. I'm going to roll it into a, a ball. This creates a little bit of tension.
And as I'm rolling, I'm sort of squishing it in with my little, little fingers. To create that tension underneath. Then we're going to leave this uncovered on the counter for about 20 minutes and that will form a little bit of a film on top and ha help it hold its shape. My dough has been pre-shaped, resting and relaxing on a dry kitchen counter for about 20 minutes. Now it's time to do the shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flour the surface here. And also put a little bit of flour on my dough. I'm going to take it and turn it over onto the flour. And then we're going to open it up a little bit form like a rectangle. Then I take it and we're going to coil it on itself. We're going to go in about midway, take another surface and go over, turn it around, pull one surface and stretch it to this side, and take this surface and stretch it over on the other side, take it and flip it over. Then once we've done that, we're now going to do a shaping of it. And we're forming tension on that ball. And the scrapers is going under there and pulling that dough together. also do that with your hands. What they like to say to do is sort of drag it. And that creates nice tension. Sort of like a drag and roll. Then once we got it in, a shape where it's fairly tight. I'm going to take some rice flour and sprinkle it here all over the surface of this ball. Then we have our our bowl and I'm just using a stainless steel bowl with a towel in it which has a lot of rice flour. You can see that. And I'm just going to take my dough and I'm going to take it and I'm going to flip it where this is going to be on the bottom inside of this bowl. And we'll pop that in there. And you notice we probably have to bring these edges together. so that it doesn't open up. Then I'm going to take some more rice flour and put it over this surface. And we're going to cover that. And we have a choice. We can either let it do its proofing here on the counter for well, maybe a couple hours, or we can put it in the refrigerator overnight and let it do a little bit more fermenting and proofing, and then in the morning we'll cook it. Since it's kind of late today, I'm going to cook this tomorrow morning, so we'll have it tomorrow instead of today.
So there's my shaped dough in my bowl. Some people use what they call a banneton, which is like a basket, has ridges in it so that when you take the dough and flip it out onto the cooking surface, you have little <laughs> imprints on it that look cute. I don't have one of those, so I'm just leaving it up to my little stainless steel bowl here. My sourdough bread has been in the refrigerator overnight. It's been about 15 hours actually. I'm getting ready to take it out and we're gonna cook it. I have my oven set for 500 degrees. Got a Dutch oven in there that's heating up. Getting ready for us to prepare the sourdough bread. It's day two in baking the sourdough bread. I've got my oven heated up to 500 degrees with a Dutch oven in there. And that's been going for about 45 minutes now. My dough is in the refrigerator. It did an overnight rest. And what do they call that, a cold fermentation? So I'm getting ready to take it out and go on to the next step of scoring it and getting it ready to put in the Dutch oven to bake. Let's do this. I have some of the things laid out that I'm gonna need to score this and get it ready to go in the Dutch oven. Number one, I have a piece of parchment paper, which I've cut so that the dough can go on top of it and the ends would serve as little handles so I can put it into the Dutch oven. When it's finished cooking, I can pull it out. In addition, I have a silicone pad here so that when I take that Dutch oven out and put it on my counter, it will absorb the heat and won't hurt my counter. I've got a very sharp knife. I don't have any razor blades to do my scoring. This knife works very well. It's very, very sharp. I use this little sauce brush to brush off excess flour from my dough. I have some rice flour in this package and I'll use that to cover my dough so that do the scoring it'll make a nice little backdrop for when it does its oven spring. This is my dough. As I mentioned before it's been in the refrigerator overnight. Let's get a look at it. And what I'm going to do now is very carefully take it out of the bowl. I didn't mean for it to drop like that, but that's okay. And as we mentioned before, I'll take this brush and brush off all that excess flour. around it. And that's actually rice flour that I put on there yesterday when I put it in the refrigerator. It did go through like a 15 hour, that's 15, 16 hour cold fermentation. So I can move these things out of the way. a little bit more off. And I'm going to brush it off of my parchment paper also. Also, I've got a timer here which I have set for 20 minutes and the first Part of the cook in the oven is going to be 20 minutes covered. I'm going to then lower the temperature in the oven and then do another 20-25 more minutes till I get the color I need. I thought about how I wanted to score this and I'm going to try something a little different. Put a little bit more flour on that and 
sort of brush it around so that it as I mentioned before so that when I score it and cook it that you'll have a little bit of that white flour showing through and then the, the rise section from where I score it. I'm going to try to do an S, S for Sylvie. And how this is going to come out, I don't know, but we shall see. Voila. Make sure that I got it deep enough in there. And I may just put a couple little Let's. There we have it. I'm gonna go get my pot, my Dutch oven, and then we can get this baby a cooking. I've got my very hot Dutch oven. Ooh, the heat is radiating off of that here. And I'm gonna just take my parchment paper with the dough on it, lower it into that pot. And then we'll take it back to the oven. My sourdough bread is now in the Dutch oven, covered. I lowered the temperature from 500 degrees to 485. I've got the timer set for its 20 minutes and it's doing its countdown now. Now we just play the waiting game till we get to go back in there and take the lid off and see what we have. It's done. Let me go close this oven. Sourdough bread is done. My little S didn't come out too bad. Kind of cute. Let's move this to the tray. Still pretty hot, so I'm going to grab it by the parchment paper. I'll put it there on the the cooling rack. Now let's move it off the parchment. Still pretty hot. It cooked for 20 minutes covered, 30 minutes uncovered. I think I've got some nice color. The internal temperature was 210 degrees, so I know we're done. So I'll let it get a little, well, maybe I can do it like this. We're hollow. Being hollow means that it's, it's done and we've got some Get crumb in there hopefully. I'm going to let this sit here on the counter and cool for about an hour and a half or so and then we'll cut into it and see what it looks like. It's not a good, good idea to cut when it's hot because actually it's still baking in there because the temperature is still high and we don't want that moisture to come out. We want it to settle with the moisture inside the dough, inside the, the loaf. Boule. My sourdough bread has been cooling for a couple hours, so it's ready to be cut into. Let's see what we got. My bread knife, and I'm just going to make a cut. Oh, somewhere around here. I didn't make that cut very good. 
Um, and it shows in my crumb. But we do have, ah, it smells yummy, yummy. I've cut my loaf open and, you know, I'm not really very happy with the crumb. I know I've done better. It looks a bit dense to me, which may indicate that it may be underproofed. But it's still going to taste good. I've got a piece over here. Let's see. I do get a sourdough flavor out of it. And like I said, it's a little dense, but it's still got good flavor. I hope you enjoyed my video. And I know a lot of times when people do videos, they try to make things seem like they come out perfect. Well, this time it didn't. My process and procedure is the same that I always use, but maybe I needed to let it spend a little bit more time proofing so that it could rise a little bit more so it wouldn't be as dense. Anybody else know where I went wrong? Let me know. Put a comment. Say whether or not maybe I didn't have enough moisture. I didn't let it rise too much. Maybe I overproofed it. But anyway, Sylvie made sourdough bread. Home cook, not a baker, but just my attempt at doing something that's always been a curiosity to me. You guys enjoy. Bye-bye.